This is the world of the campus vets. He has a combination aggression complex. <laughs> Sometimes you get these calves in and they're beyond the point where you can help them and their heart rates are virtually stopped. Hey, don't bite my ankle. Western College of Veterinary Medicine, students in the teaching hospital learn to handle animal emergencies for the first time in real life situations. Two severely dehydrated calves have just arrived at the large animal clinic. Oh, they just got the diarrhea real bad. I can't get it cured, so. For newborn calves, a bad case of diarrhea called scours can be fatal. If they're not treated, they'll just they'll just fade away, their hearts will stop working, their lungs will stop working. This emergency case falls to vet student Jessica Patterson, okay. who must rehydrate the calves before it's too late. When they have bad diarrhea, they lose a lot of bicarbonate through their feces. And that means the pH of their blood drops really low. And the body doesn't do well when the pH of the blood changes. They could go downhill really fast. Sometimes you get these calves in and they're beyond the point where you can help them and their heart rates are virtually stopped and they're, they're not breathing very well anymore. And despite how hard you try, you just can't get them back. They'll just die. Jessica has only minutes to get the calves on liquid nutrients to save their lives. In a nearby home, Toby Yant has a soft spot for chihuahuas. That's Nico you hear barking. <laughs> In spite of Toby's best efforts, Nico has a severe problem with aggression. We're not eating the camera. It just is frustrating knowing that we have tried everything that normally works in cases like this, and nothing's really helped. His fear really makes me sad. Like, it's, he's my baby. Noelle is a different story. Noelle is probably the complete opposite of Nico. She has a pretty bad mouth infection. She's missing a lot of teeth. We haven't actually been able to have a good look in her mouth because she's so guarded about it. And so we really don't know what all is going on there. Toby hopes the teaching hospital can provide some solutions. We're gonna be taking Noelle to get a dental cleaning. And we'll just be going in to talk to a couple students and one of the doctors for Nico's behavior problems. Nico. I mean, I'm not expecting miracles, but I would just like some way to help calm some of his anxiety issues. This is where, when he's scared, he, they like to hide. Ryan Turnbull and his mother, Kathy, have their hands full with eight-week-old Echo and her brother, Rocky. The baby ferrets are in for a routine checkup. Anything, they get into everything. Just like a little puppy or a little kitten. Student Dominique Lamb is starting her exotic animal training. She's never examined a ferret before. So this one's Echo. Echo. And up there is Rocky. Oh! <laughs> okay. Give me a nice yawn. Come on. Oh. Good kid. We graduate as general practitioners, and we're supposed to know how to practice on any kind of animal. Under the supervision of Dr. Denelin Parker, the vet students attempt to confirm the gender of the juvenile ferrets. So you want to tell me what you found, and then we'll go through it. You can let her run around. Probably won't Much better at holding it with my right hand. Dominique takes a look at Rocky. What she's looking for is a belly button-like bump that indicates it's a male. It doesn't look that different to me. Oh, they're both girls. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Rocky, you're a girl. <laughs> the news comes as a surprise to Rocky's owners. Good, that makes me feel better. I was like, it looks the same. Congratulations. It was a little bit sad because the male owner, his face just kind of went, oh, when he found out they have now have four female ferrets. He was really hoping for a rooting, you know, he was rooting for a guy in the house. 
<laughs> we gotta rethink a name now for her. <laughs> what was she Rocket. <laughs> the two females are healthy. Echo and the newly named Rocket are ready to go home. Hi, I'm Kirsten. I'm a fourth year student on dentals and electives today. Okay. So I'm gonna take care of you and little Miss Noel. Noel. Okay, Noel. Yeah. We have not had a good look at her mouth. Okay. She doesn't like us touching it because it hurts, right, sweetie? Yes. She eating and drinking well? Mm hmm So now I get to take a peek at you. I'm sure you'll be thrilled. Yeah. Vet student Kirsten Clark has a less than cooperative patient in Noel. Hi, sweetie. It's okay. Come on. I don't want to look at your mom's mouth. It's okay. I really don't. I know, sweetie. Oh, baby, I know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take her to the back okay. and um, have Dr. Johnson and I look at her mouth okay. just so we only have to do it once rather than me looking at it and then him looking at it. I'm sorry, sweetie. You have to come with me and clearly I'm evil. <laughs> As Kirsten deals with Noelle's dental problems, Nico's mental problems will be explored by vet student Diane Crookshank. Hi, Toby, I'm Diane. Hi, it's Hi, okay, Nico. Hi, Pumpkin. Has he ever bitten anyone? I think about three times he's actually made contact. Okay, so it's more of a fear thing. Yeah. He's okay. like keeping one eye on me over here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be back in 10 minutes, all right? All right. Diane is no stranger to physical assessments, but behavioral problems can be tricky. There's different reasons why dogs are aggressive. Um, we have a whole list, <laughs> a huge book on behavior. Um, she looks like she's, she's tried all sorts of different things. She's a very dedicated owner. And so now we gotta see, okay, well, what hasn't she tried and where do we go from here? Spay and neuters are the most common medical procedures veterinarians perform. At the teaching hospital, these delicate operations fall to fourth-year students like Heather Connolly. I had a great summer job last year, so I had the, um, the chance to have lots of experience doing spays and neuters, although I haven't done one for six months, so I'm sure this one will be a little bit more slow than, <laughs> than normal, but, but I feel pretty confident. Hi, but Heather's never worked on a large dog before. And this female St. Bernard cross named Kida will prove more challenging than Heather could have ever imagined. Over in the exam room, Toby is back with Noel. The Chihuahua wouldn't let Kirsten or staff veterinarian Dr. Matthew Johnson close enough to examine her mouth. Once we get her sedated, then we can do a complete dental exam. If you have any questions or concerns, just give us a shout. Super. I am, I am a little worried about her. Once Noelle is on the operating table, the mystery inside her mouth will be revealed. Next, Jessica Patterson fights the clock to save the dehydrated calves. Her eyes really sunken right now. She looks really dehydrated. In the large animal clinic, the dehydrated calves are in critical condition. Vet student Jessica Patterson struggles to get a blood test. The results will determine what type of fluids she'll use to rehydrate them. When these guys get dehydrated, their veins get really small. So sometimes it's kind of like fishing for a needle in a haystack. We'll wait to see what the blood gas is, and in the meantime, we'll just put her on basic fluids and then when we get the blood gas results back, we'll know exactly what she needs as far as electrolytes and fluid therapy. In the meantime, she must insert intravenous catheters into the calves. No easy task. Her vein is so collapsed, you can't really even feel it. Sometimes you gotta hang these guys almost upside down to get their vein to come up. With the catheters in place, the team anxiously awaits the results of the blood test. In the small animal clinic, vet student Diane Crookshank investigates the cause of Nico's aggression. She asks the dog's owner to keep a detailed record of Nico's behavior for the next few days. He's had it for at least four years. So the prognosis is poor, but we have to try. Um, so, okay, that's not all right, Nico. Okay, 
And this dog is trying to tell us that he's fearful, or he's anxious, he's got a lot of anxiety in his life. Why? I don't know, but we'll try to get to the root of it. The blood tests have arrived, and both calves have extremely acidic blood, but this one is in the worst shape. Her eyes really sunken right now. She looks really dehydrated. She's obviously really recumbent and flat. So we'll let her stew there while we put in a catheter for this one. So we do the same thing. He might protest more about this because he's more alert. What's flowing into them is a combination of sterile distilled water plus um, a ready-made solution of salts, which includes bicarbonate, which is basically baking soda. Water rehydrates the calves, while bicarbonate rebalances the pH level of their blood. Because our scour hotel is so full, we have to put these two guys together. See, this one's not sucking when I put my finger in her mouth, so that means she's feeling pretty lousy. With calves, a suck reflex is almost automatic, so it's always a good test of how rotten they feel. Over the coming hours, the team will learn whether their efforts to save the calves' lives were successful. For now, they can only watch and wait. The St. Bernard Cross is being prepared for surgery. Vet student Heather Connolly has spayed dogs before, but never one as large as Keita. She's worried about getting the dog's reproductive organs out far enough to work on. It scares me. I don't know why. It just scares me. As long me. as you, you know, if you pull up, end up like if you if you pull up on the on the ovary yeah. or so, right, then you you might rupture the vessel. Right. Heather right. turns to surgical intern Dr. Felix Dewar for reassurance. <laughs> I know. It's, I know. Well, if you if you're not if you're not happy, just you know okay. say hello, and then we can yeah. always give you a hand or so. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's always scary. All right. We'll do good. <laughs> Along with Dr. Dewar, Dr. Matthew Johnson will closely monitor every student surgeon today, including Heather. Heather will remove Keita's ovaries and part of her uterus, but first she has to find them, a challenge with such a large dog. God. I'm through, but I'm having problems fighting the fat. <laughs> oh, okay. What are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I'm through. I see intestine. It's just the fat is obstructing me. Heather struggles through all the, the puppy fat to find the young dog's underdeveloped reproductive organs. What's he doing? I'm looking for a uterus. Oh, okay. The search for Keita's uterus has proven more difficult than Heather ever imagined. Coming up, the vet students face a mouthful of trouble. Oh, little girl, I'm so sorry. Vet student Jackie Pierce is about to find out the extent of Noelle's dental problems. The biggest thing with the dental today is that we don't exactly know what we're dealing with because we haven't looked at her teeth yet because she won't let us anywhere near her head. Small dogs like Noelle can pose big problems during dental surgery. If you're pulling a tooth and you're sort of pulling her jaw the other way, then that can easily break their jaw. Jackie has never extracted a tooth before. It doesn't really help me to get rattled, and the more rattled you get, the more your hands start shaking, and the less rational you become. You kind of have to work at keeping yourself calm. Small animal intern, Dr. Joanna Robson, will watch over Jackie's work. And again, Jack, slide your index yeah. finger down. There yeah. you go, just gives you better control. They discover that Noelle's small mouth is full of decay. Actually, we need to maybe pull that tooth. Not just one, but tooth, after tooth, after tooth. There you go, good job. Five, sure, five sir. teeth left? Yeah, yeah five, five teeth left. Four canines and a premolar. Yeah. All the others are gone. Yeah. Oh, dear. Um, X-rays reveal an even bigger problem. Noelle has severe dental disease in her canine tooth. Which is probably the most difficult extraction out of all of them because the root is so long. Okay. So what's the verdict, future Dr. Pierce? Lytic bone. Um, there's only probably about that much root left in there. And it's one that you don't want to pull the wrong way on because you can fracture bone and um, run into some complications. 
Oh, little girl, I'm so sorry you have to have this. Initially, you kind of panic, and then you have a little inner voice that says, OK, this is how you do it. You've read about it tons of times, and it really isn't that bad. Jackie performs the tooth extraction perfectly. Good. Yeah, I was quite happy. It went well and gives you that extra confidence knowing that once you go out and practice and are on your own, that you are capable of doing it. In the large animal clinic, Jessica's fluid therapy has brought the calves back to life. They're bawling, they're looking hungry, so we're going to try bottle feeding them now. Come on. It's lunch time. And there he goes. Yay. He didn't want to suck anything yesterday. He's doing much better. Good boy. And this is really the best medicine you can give them once they're feeling better is milk. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now you figured it out. It's always a relief when you come in the morning and they suck the bottle. Oh. <sighs> Who needs to go to the gym when you work in the scour ward? <laughs> You're next. Oh. Saved from the brink of death, the calves are almost ready to return home. We'll keep them one more night. Um, make sure their diarrhea is starting to get better and their feces are getting a bit firmer. Good night. <laughs> you have a nap. Hi, Noelle. Hi, honey. Noelle may only have four teeth left, but she's feeling much better. Go home and see your mom now. How's she been? She's been very good. It's actually amazing how much her attitude's changed in the last day, I think. Since her mouth doesn't hurt anymore, she wags her tail and she's happier, has a little bit more energy, so it's really nice to see that. I very much missed having her at home. I mean, it's been very quiet, but it wasn't a nice quiet. It's your mom. Here she is. Hi, mom. <laughs> yes. She's actually wanting her face petted, and it's... She has never wanted us near her face. And hopefully having this done will mean that she's got less pain, less to worry about. Noelle is on the mend. But Toby will soon be back with Nico and his nasty attitude. Oh, excuse me. Well into her spay operation on a St. Bernard cross, vet student Heather Connolly is getting anxious. She can't locate the dog's uterus. I wanted to do a big dog. <laughs> you have to reach so far into the big ones, their abdomens are so deep. She's young, it's gonna be small. Because she probably hasn't gone into her first heat cycle yet, so the uterus is gonna be underdeveloped. Yeah. That's it. Should be it. It's looking like an ovary right there. Okay. So grab hold of the yeah. ovary with your left hand. You wanna put a clamp on the proper ligament? Do I want to stretch this first? No, nope. you want to put a clamp on the proper ligament so that if you accidentally drop it, you okay. can get it back and we don't have to go hunting for another hour. Okay. Heather finds the uterus, okay. but now so the tough part, breaking a ligament so the ovaries can be pulled out far enough to work on. This part. So the short ones attached to the kidney, when you pull up, the kidney moves with it, so yes. those aren't so important. But that okay. one that runs lateral, it's the one that anchors it to the body wall, Wait. and that's the one you have to break. Okay, so the lateral one. Does it feel nice and taut it runs cranium? Yeah, it's, oh. I'm feeling it. I'm just going up, trying to my finger kept slipping off of it. So. <laughs> this is very scary for me, but I'm going to break it. Uh, you're using this kind of motion with your finger? Heather manages to get the ovaries out where she can see them by stretching the ligament instead of breaking it. Okay, so we're all tied off and ready to cut it out of there now. <laughs> So this is the uterus, and that's the, the two horns of the uterus, and the ovaries are in each of these. So you're dead? Yeah, now I just have to sew her up. Awesome job, Heather. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Dewar. <laughs> Took a little longer than I expected, but, but that's all right. They do sometimes. In the end, the large dog turned out to be just the challenge Heather was looking for. I'll remember things like that, and it'll help me in the future for sure. Oh, that's a good girl. 
Just Nico, the chihuahua <laughs> with a bad attitude, is back at the clinic. Are we ready? Yep, I think so. Hi, Nico. Vet student Diane Cruikshank has spent the past few days consulting behavioral experts. He has a combination aggression complex, okay? Like from strangers, he gets very, yeah, okay? Um, oh, excuse me. That's okay. You want to go down over there? I guess I'm too close. Diane recommends steps to remove the triggers of Nico's aggression and help the dog feel safer um, so at home. Okay, it's gonna take a lot of time. Um, there is still hope, but it would take a lot of hard work. Cheer up for that. Oh, totally. Good, good. <laughs> so guys, I'm confident in you. I'm confident in you. I'm gonna read through the, all the literature that she gave me and read the books she suggested. Um, maybe there's just one snippet of information that's gonna make it all come together. We'll keep working on it. This little guy is my whole world. I'd be lost without him. You want to bite my face? Oh, my good girl. Don't eat the microphone. 